Hey guys, so I got a very common issue happening with these things. Uh, 18 wheeler a trailer. These guys tend to break right in there. And it's pretty common, you know, just a lot of twisting and things going on. Uh, they want me to look at that one too. Man, that's not really good. Yeah, so um, I'll be doing a little bit of art gouging in there. Got to be real careful with the hoses. Uh, but first, we'll be taking this sec center section off. I guess it's a guide for... This is a drill rig, drilling company, blasting drilling, drilling company. So get that out of the way for now. Take it, off. Take it off with a crane. Just move it to the side. And then I'll start gouging. And, uh, hopefully there aren't any hoses and things in that area. I'll have to see when I climb in there. Yeah, it should be fine. Oh, maybe there's my pencil. But it's fairly common, so it's really not that big of a um, repair. Uh, pretty simple. It's worse when they break it out in the in on the road, and when these break on both sides and it twists, that's pretty bad. But here we're in good shape. We at least caught it before we got too far, and we'll be able to take care of it. So nice, simple little project, and I hope you guys stick around for a little while. All right, see you in a minute. All right, so now I got some better access to this area. I'll probably be cleaning this up here with the, the needle scaler just to make sure it's, I can see the end of the crack. Will look good. Those look good. Okay, so to keep from uh, throwing all the sparks up into the brake shoes, get my fire blanket. Our blanket's gonna take a heck of a beating, but that's all right, that's what it's for. So, my only uh, concern now is not to arc on this U-bolt. That would stink. So, well, fortunately, I finally got myself a lot of darkening lens. So that'll help a little bit. So, give me a second, I'll get all set up. This is the gouger I'm using. It's a Profax, uh, very similar to the Arc Air. A uh, Profax is cheaper though. And this is a 4000, 4001 dash one or something like that. The dash one, I believe, gives it a swivel. But I, I like the 3000 version because it's, it's a flatter unit and you can fit it in tighter spaces. This guy, this ear is just too big. So I just picked this one up because my other one broke and that's all they had. So I'll use this one until it breaks. And so, um, yeah, that's why I like the other one, because it's a flatter design. The lever runs more parallel with this here. So, here we go.
that that uh, <laughs> that blanket really caught it all. Yeah, poor blanket. Oh well. Anyway, so that was my first pass on this here. I'll try and go to where I can see the separation line of the uh, actual housing and the spring perch itself. That way, I, I can know I'm starting fresh. see the separation line and uh, naturally I can't stick a grinder in there so I'm gonna I, I tried to clean it up as best I could so now you see the separation line of the two materials and now I'll be able to put in some uh, nice welds in there hopefully nice welds right and uh, go from there just regular old 7018s a big it'll probably be about like a, a three-quarter inch weld maybe now that I removed so much so it's quite a few passes all right So I forgot to mention that I normally like to gouge these quarter inch carbons. These quarter inch carbons, uh, I forget. I think these are arc airs. Yeah, they're arc airs. These are the solid ones. I like the hollow ones also. The hollow ones work really good for keeping the, the nose of this real rounded. And that way it doesn't sharpen to a point yet when you're going in one direction or so. Anyway, so this quarter inch, I'd like to gouge from with about, uh, at about, let's say 200 to maybe 220 max. I really don't like 220, it starts to get a little carried away. But 200, you can get a nice steady uh, arc, a consistent arc without it sputtering too much. So that works really well. All right, welding next. what's happening here is that uh, there's the, on the separation line there seems to be a lot of dirt and junk underneath it something I can't really clean out so you'll start noticing a lot of bubbling coming out and it's bubbling out that dirt so that first pass isn't always pretty but at least it'll close the gap between the dirt on each side and uh, then from there you can put on some good welds
pretty bad. A lot of dirt there towards the end. Okay, so that was um, an eight inch rod. I'm gonna run another eight inch rod along this top edge here just to make sure that I'm able to tie into it well, then I'll probably switch over to 532. I don't know if it was visible in the in you know all the brightness that was going on but there was a, a lot of BBs being shed off and uh, what what happens when the, that when that happens uh, normally either you have some magnetism or the amperage could be too high and so in my case I felt the amperage was a little high so I'm gonna make the adjustment and switch over to 532s. Okay so I switched over to the 532 7018s so these are Excaliburs and uh, this I have it set at I think of 128 amps, not too hot. Uh, now that the material is already warm, and I think I go between 128 and 134, depending on the position. So like 134 maybe max if I'm doing anything vertical. I was welding some big pipe casing the other day that I did it at 134, but that was three quarter inch thick, so it's pretty solid. So uh, this being a flat weld should be all right. I'll have to see here. In the next uh, few minutes as I start welding this.
Okay, that was a little cold for me. I'm gonna turn it up about two, three amps. It's interesting, one of the challenges that, that I'm finding when I try and videotape up close is that you guys are between me and the uh, and the well, so I'm having to look around the camera uh, with the uh, with the cam with the GoPro in front of me. So uh, it is what it is, right? A pancake hood would have helped out a lot. It's a, well, sort of a pancake hood because the sun was coming in from behind. That's, that's the way it goes sometimes. So I believe that was the last pass. That didn't take too terribly long, maybe about 45 minutes or so. Our Godger makes so, things so much faster, it's really nice. So that's about it. I'll get that, I'll get that fire blanket out of the way. And uh, two 532 passes. Don't look too close. <laughs> you may see something. But anyway, that's about as good as it get. That's quite a mess also. I mean, they're really designed to hold well, right? With uh, very little welds. Look at what they did here. They completely didn't even finish that out. But, oh well. At least I know this side's fairly good. All right. Well, I think that'll do it. So uh, thanks for the follow. And uh, you know, this is again not not a how-to, but it's how I did it. So I uh, hope you learned something from it. Maybe at least that art gouging is the way to go. And we'll catch you guys on the next one. Yeah.